Hey guys, the daily project here. Today, my 974 GMC 1946 showed up. I'm here with my friend Mark. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Bridgewater. I'm gonna, we're here with Seth and his newly acquired 1946 ADCW 974, serial number 098, right? I believe so. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that out in a second. I'm gonna go over it with a fine tooth comb here and look at all the details and see what's factory original, what isn't, and condition of things, and just really uh, do a deep dive on this. So let's get started. Uh, this front bumper that almost is straight, it should be curved on the ends. I think it's actually an original bumper that's been straightened out. Because the profile on the ends of this is factory, that cut right there. It's the narrow bumper, the shallow bumper. There was also a deep one that was available. This is a smaller one. This is an original front license plate bracket. It's just got twisted around here. Yeah. So that's good because you don't always have that. Those are often missing. This brace back here should go, unless you're planning on bulldozing buildings or something. That, was, that shouldn't be there. No, this no, shouldn't be here, be. yeah. Somebody put this on here for chains or whatever. That should go. These three bolts are also used for an optional tow hook that could be on here, so it'd be nice to find those and get those on here. Uh, got radiator shutters, those are sometimes missing, so it's good to see that in there. They're usually there, but I've seen a few trucks where they've been removed. Yeah. I think it still has the mechanism on the inside, yeah, the, it's the just not connected. The color, original factory color is the Brewster Green which is very common. Brewster green with apple green under here, we'll probably find an apple green three eighths wide pinstripe coming to a bullet point right here. And the original wheels would have been apple green as well. Normally this, this would all be painted the Brewster green too, while the whole grill is. Chrome was an option. This particular grill is painted entirely Brewster green. And the lettering would have been highlighted in apple green, unless there was an option of getting the entire molding painted apple green. Instead of just the pinstripe, uh, it looks like I don't know if it's a zinc chromate primer. It kind of looks like it is, but it kind of looks like apple green as well. Underneath so it. yeah, I, I think that's I think that's primer. Yeah, it's just the Brewster green, the dark green over it, and there probably was apple green inside these letters that's just uh, gone now. Is all these headlights, buckets, as well as the fenders would have been black. You can still see some black in there, especially on the sides. The park light housings were chrome as an option. The rings were always chrome, except during wartime. Mm -hmm. This is right after the war. We've got the six vent door knobs and the oil door knob. That's really great to see. I mean, especially the diesel oil on these are very tough to find. These drill motors, truck emblems are being reproduced now. It's nice to see the original ones on here. Have we got everything on the other side? Yep. Uh, the hood's open. Yep, everything's there. knobs on the other side. This, this is remarkable to see. These slots where the hood latches go through, that's, there's hardly any wear there at all. And these hoods are aluminum, so with any high mileage, especially off-road work, these holes get elongated and this whole area just gets torn out. So this is like really, really nice right here. I think the other side is a little bit worse, yeah. probably just from doing the oil bath air cleaners. But even then, yeah, it's it still... still looks pretty good. So that's very nice. And the whole thing is just really straight. I mean, other than the usual terrace and stuff in the fender. Yeah. The good size is really nice. That's great. Yeah. I didn't see any corrosion on top or anything like that yeah. either. So. Let's look under the hood on the other side since that's open. I first knew this truck about 30 years ago when I was in Oklahoma. It was owned by Roy Sullivan. It's about at least three hours ago now. And um, another thing that's really remarkable about this particular truck is that it still has part of an original air cleaner left right here. A decal, I'm sorry. The decal with the servicing information. And there's also a fuel filter. The secondary fuel filter on the other side of the engine has a complete original decal on one side and partial on the other. And Roy back then actually mailed me those two pieces. The, air, the This air cleaner I've had 30 years ago in my possession at home in California for a short time, as well as the, the fuel filter. And um, I measured all those, uh, all the lettering out, all the spacing and, and size of everything to uh, make reproduction decals with. So it's neat to see this thing is still surviving really well that way. It still looks almost as good as it did 30 years ago. 30 years and what, probably 4,000 miles? Yeah. 
So it's really remarkable there's any of that left. It's too bad there isn't more. It's, you can see the outline of the original decal it goes all the way over to here. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot missing, but so far that's all I found for making a reproduction decal. Yes. This is the start. And we'll be taking some of this grease off here and see if there's anything left on the others too as well. It'll really be nice if there's some more under there on, uh, on the other two. Yeah, because it looks like those have never been cleaned either. Yeah. Looking under here more. There's still two knockouts for GMC heater. It has a Mac here right now, right? You said? Yes. Yeah, it does have a Mac somebody, here. Somebody was able to use the original two knockout locations. It's like a, they enlarged this one a bit. But that is the original location for the GMC heater and these, these bolts too. Down here, we've got fuel pump. And there's a bracket that bolts on <clears throat> the back cover here with that's really good to see that has all the original bracket for securing the tubing and fuel lines uh, you don't always see that and what else is remarkable here um, got some original gray paint showing on the side of the engine here that's the original Terramore's diesel gray the alpine green that everybody's familiar with didn't come out until about 1957 so all these GMCs had great 71 series engines in them. And what I'm really interested in seeing up here is if we have an original block, because <clears throat> that is almost never there. <clears throat> these blocks often had to get replaced with newer blocks and it's there. <laughs> this is really nice. <clears throat> it's right down here. It's got four pins holding a brass plate on the left, clean that off but there's gonna be an engine model number, a serial number right there. It's probably original to the truck because you almost never see those. The replacement blocks just had a boss cast in the block with the stamping right on the boss instead of the ID plate. Yeah, that's, that's really great. You almost never see that, never ever. And this is another good find right here. <clears throat> this is the original thermostat control housing for the shutters. It's not all there. There's an air cylinder that mounts in here. Mm -hmm. And the thermostat control is right in the tank. So it's a completely self-contained unit. The thermostat control in here tells the shutter, tells tells the cylinder to activate with air pressure. That hose, that line is gone and opens the shutters right on the other side of the, uh, the radiator there. That's really hard to find. It is broken too, but at least it's something. Yep, something better than nothing. Yep, for sure. Here we are on the left side of the hood. Here's that beautiful fuel filter decal. This thing is gorgeous, I love it. <laughs> like I said, I saw it 30 years ago and took all my measurements on it. And as I recall, because he sent sent this whole cover to me, the backside has one also, but the back one's very deteriorated compared to this one. This one's complete. That's Even still really 30 years old. Really 30 years later. Yeah. Original air compressor? Yeah, air compressor with the external unloader valve. A lot of times compressors would be replaced with a newer one that has this, um, a lower valve which dumps air once you reach full pressure. Mm -hmm. It's all contained inside the head and it's got a smooth head on top. So this is an older compressor. It's probably the original one. Definitely the original style. Anyway. Here you've got these external fuel manifolds. That's probably the original head. A lot of engines have had later heads put on to have these fuel manifolds, the, the uh, supply and the return drilled inside the head. So that's old and that's probably original. This valve cover is original. The uh, GM diesel power plate at the top. That's before they started stamping these covers with General Motors diesel embossed, mm -hmm. which predated Detroit diesel embossed in the same lettering. So this is the oldest valve cover. That's really great. All for the acorn nuts. This piece of the melody had a single extension arm mirror here with a five inch head on it. So at least you have that. That's nice. We have that on the other side? Yes. Mm, I do not recall seeing that on the other side. Yeah, it's there. You got both of them. All you Half need to get is an extension arm and a mirror head. Half the battle. Yeah, that's that's most of it right there. <coughs> running board is in nice shape for running board. One down. All these diamonds. I mean, there hasn't been much contact with guys' boots here. You know, they're. A lot of times these have holes in the middle of each one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the passenger side's a little bit burst yeah. for wear, and then there's also a rust hole oh, on, uh, where it's it's a patch that looks like it's probably just thin metal. 
Yeah. And it just wore out faster than the rest of it. And I guess the rest through the door. Oh, yeah. Well. Pretty standard. Of course, this is banana. This is nice to have, but you don't want it. Yeah, it was definitely used climbing in and out on the tow truck or the, oh. the hauling truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, that's probably why this is uh, more down. Yeah, 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 there's sure. probably a bracket that's supposed to go across. The yeah, bottom. well, yeah. there there's three of them, and honestly, GMC didn't make these step brackets very well. They always tear and break. There's one under each pair of these bolts here. There's one there, one there, one up here, and they aren't real strong. It looks like it's uh, it's there. Right, but they always they always break in the back. Yeah, it's between the board and the frame. Yeah. Molding here in the upper half of the cab. Pretty standard. Yeah, and the rust here. Very minor rust in the back of the cab too. So yeah, but that's all along the seam. That's typical. That's, yep. Along the seam and then along the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. Just, yeah. It's just where water sits. This, engine is equipped with an air box heater right here one of the uh, um, air box covers instead of having the stamped metal air box cover it's replaced with a casting that has this heater in there and we'll probably see the controls for that in the cab which preheats your <laughs> air for combustion on a cold day because seems to start easier like that's that's an option that's not like stamped the stove air. and the exhaust how they just have that uh, uh, Recirculate the exhaust. Oh, right, on the, yeah. on the gas engines. Yeah. Right, with the valve, with the spring that heats up and it redress your exhaust yeah. gas around the intake manifold. Yeah. Right. Yeah, kind of the same idea. This actually burns fuel, it burns diesel fuel. Oh, on the glow okay. plug. Yeah. So you're you actually got a burning. Plug in there. Yeah, you're actually burning diesel fuel inside the air box. So you're actually getting burnt diesel exhaust in your air, but it makes the air hot and helps the engine get started. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Original oil filters, those are often missing too. What guys would do is they cut that thing off, that manifold off down just ahead of this thing or be ahead of that pillar and weld a plate over the end and run hoses to an outside lubrifier on the cowl or the running board just to make it easier to service. Right. So this is great to see. <laughs> I'm sure that generator is original. This is, uh, this is your air pressure governor right here. That's original, this bracket. That's factory original. All this tubing, I'm sure, is original. These loops, yep. all these fuel lines are original. This, uh, <laughs> behind the generator, this wooden block with the clamp, that's original to hold fuel lines. And the oil pressure line for the gauge, that's all factory. So would this truck have had two sets of horns from the factory? Yeah, electric horns, yeah. Those were standard, and if you wanted an air horn, it was optional. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. This bend in this airline, that loop, that's all original. Um, <coughs> wiring. This is an original wire harness. Goes in through this large hole up here. And it's not too bad. Um, there's a junction here with connectors. Should be. Yeah, this is where one harness goes into the other. And there's a section in here where you have quick disconnects to disconnect all the wires to join the harness that goes back on the frame to the main harness. Um, wow. This, this looks very nicely intact. There's a lot there. And here's your cab assembly information. It's a 1500 mile cab, which is the standard big cab. This cab is serial number 20337, is that a seven? Yeah. yeah. So it might be an eight. Your cab assembly number. That might be an eight. So this yeah. green voltage regulator, yeah. all the stuff on the firewall, that relay. This is all factory original. Really nice. We are nice. Seth had already told me the bench seat was gone, which it obviously is. It originally had a bench seat. Um, yeah, it looks like somebody. Uh, this this hole right now. Oh, we can swing this forward. <laughs> There's a pair of slots like this, one on the right, one on the left. That's where the seat back hangs and a hook right there. Mm -hmm. And it locks into the bottom section. And the seat section slides on these rails down here. It has a pin where you can position the seat back, mm -hmm. or, excuse me, the seat, and the back hinges with it. The back always being connected to the back of the cab. The floor mat is all gone, which is not 
uncommon at all. It's very rare to see one of these trucks with rubber floor mats still in it or any remnants of it. Um, it's too bad that's not there, but that's... Would it originally been wood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, this wood panel's original, for sure. That's all original, those cutouts, but it had a rubber mat that went up <clears throat> to the top of the tow board right here. So uh, this, okay, this is interesting. Here's your air here that we talked about on the block up there. This is optional. You don't all see this up here. In fact, uh, not really very often. It's not super rare. So you can see it's this air heater right here. Use while cranking only. So this is the switch that's, that uh, lights your glow plug. So what you do is you turn on your ignition to get power. You turn on that switch for the glow plug. And then as you're pumping this, this is a fuel pump that goes right to your tank and squirts fuel in there into the air box. As you're pumping that, uh, you press your starter switch as you're cranking until it fires. <clears throat> so it's actually burning fuel inside the air box to get hot air. It's actually exhaust, it's actually burnt fuel, but it heats up the air box air. And of course, that's really important for a diesel on a cold day. You can't, you can't get that air hot enough just by compression alone, you're not gonna start. Right. Um, that's why a lot of guys never shut them off. Right, yeah, right, <laughs> leave them running. Um, this is interesting. This is, um, this is the original stop button right here. It has a tag below it that says stop. You can see that. Mm -hmm. This is a replacement. Um, I think GMC supplied these because I see these a lot on these trucks instead of these. Originally, I thought off. it was a later version, but I, I now believe that these were used all the way through the AC ADC production, but these were supplied by GMC as a replacement when these went out. And this has, this isn't there, but these kind have a plastic tag goes off to the side that says start and stop. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's missing on this one. But this is how it should be restored with a start here. And the same tag says stop on this side. What's this little dude for? Uh, that's been added. I don't okay. know what that would have been for. Maybe, it might be a low air warning. This, even though this gauge kind of looks out of place compared to the rest of the instrument panel, this is the original location for the air pressure gauge. Because that wasn't, when they first started designing this panel, they didn't really have a place for air brake gauge. Um, so you, all you have is your fuel and amp and water and oil besides your tack and speedometer. So they always add the air gauge over here and it is it is installed on the front of the dash like that rather than from behind like on this uh, instrument panel. Your uh, <coughs> gear change plates here indicate, we'll find out when we look down there, but this indicates you have an overdrive fifth, which is nice. At least you got high gearing on the transmission. Overdrive in the main box is forward toward the dash and your direct drive fourth, the next one down is back. Uh, direct drive transmission, your fifth gear is back, and that's high gear, but it's only direct, one to one. So there is an overdrive in this up there. And the auxiliary, you got your low, direct, and over here, three speed auxiliary, which was factory. Um, GMC wasn't putting four, yeah, everybody thinks, everybody tends to think that the auxiliary transmission is a four speed. Well, that came later. GMC was only putting three speed auxiliaries in trucks all the way through the 50s. The four speeds didn't come out until later. Um, this is your air shutoff for a flapper valve inside the blower. So if your engine runs away from you, um, you got a problem with the engine sucking in lube oil and running off the lube oil and running off, or you have a fuel problem, you can always shut it down by pulling this and closing the air intake. And that's the way to kill the engine as a last resort. So your headlight switch, this is not often seen. You can see it says lights in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's gone, broken. So that's an original headlight switch, original stop switch. Was it? Yeah, stop switch. That is where the ignition switch goes, but it's a newer one, it's been replaced. This is original, and as I said, that's, I think that's a GM replacement. Somebody's put a water temperature gauge down here because the one up here apparently wasn't working anymore. Uh, right there. That's your original. These gauges are all original. And at times, sometimes they got mismatched. In fact, actually, let's see, do we have a mismatch here? Yeah, this is actually an older oil pressure gauge. It's got the old, older style numbers um, that came from the late 30s. So GMC didn't care. They used up stock until it was gone. Yeah. So this is actually an older gauge with all the other gauges being correct for this year. So but that's, that's, right. that's, that's the way they did it. That might be just on the first runs. Well, but this, this, this is a, yeah, this is a 46 though. So they were using they were using this all through the early 40s. They finally probably ran out about this time. Maybe even 47, 48, they finally ran out of these, who knows. They're ambitious on their production. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this air pressure manifold down here is all original. Um, it's where your air comes in from the compressor and is routed to the windshield wipers and uh, 
the uh, this brake this trailer brake valve has been added, but it goes down to the original manifold. And of course, this turn signal switches. Nah, but they, they didn't have those. And it's obviously a very modern one, right? Yeah. No, I have not. Okay, it should say ADCW nine seventy four zero nine eight. Yep. Can you read it? ADCW nine seven four zero nine eight. Yep. That's it. And then uh, horsepower ninety eight or one eighty four. Should be one eighty four point five, yeah. I believe. Uh, I do not see the point five. I do okay, one eighty four then. Yeah. And uh, two thousand RPM. RPM. Mm -hmm. Fifty five thousand pound. Right. Gross weight. weight. Uh -huh. yeah. Does he have the combination? We have 70,000 also. Or excuse me, uh, yes, uh, 70, 90,000. It just says maximum gross weight, 55,000. Okay, yeah, for the truck only. Looks like an original gear shift with that release there stuck. That's broken. Yeah, broken. That's an original shifter though. This is original. Good to see. We have both of these little trim plates. Sometimes those are missing. Windshield cranks, all their gear windshield wipers. Yep. Um, headliner, you don't have the top, but you've got these sides here on both sides, those pieces. And in back, it's missing on this side, but behind you, Seth, there's a pocket there with a metal edge. Mm -hmm. That's the way these cabs were built from the beginning, 1937 till 49. They have a pocket here with a, it's actually an opening with a pocket inside where you can put your paperwork inside there. So you have one of them anyway. And some remnants of the back piece here. But you still have all the strips that the headliner is tacked to up here. So that's nice. Yeah. And it has had an air horn added. It's not a GMC install. Somebody decided to put the valve right here. As opposed to in the middle up above or on the left up above. The GMC 75 gallon fuel tank. This cover behind it from stones, whatever, off the wheels. Three brackets. This one's been cut here. To add another strap anchor. Something must have broken there. The middle one would look like these two. It's got four mounting bolts, two on each side, with one bolt, one larger bolt in the center for the strap to go through. Yep. We're going to look at the other side in a second, see if that's there. Um, this air reservoir is original. This shallow channel that the air reservoir is coming from. That's all original. The auxiliary transmission, often these get moved around. If the frame gets extended or it gets a piece spliced in um, and you move the rear axles back, you can only have so much distance, so much length on drive shafts. So a lot of times these brownies are called, <coughs> brown life spicer rear box get moved back. This is still in the original location. You can see it's still got hot rivets right here yep. that are holding in the mounting bracket. And the front end is suspended right under the cab, that's where it was built, right there. So that's nice to see, that hasn't been changed. There's an ID plate on here. What do we have? It's a 703 Spicer Brown Light Model 703 transmission. That was the standard transmission for the 970 uh, series, 973, 974 models. It's, um, it's kind of an economy version. The 8000 series Spicer boxes were available also, like an 8031C, three speed and an 8000 series. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't really see those too often on the 970s. That 703 is usually what's there. Um, the drive shaft brake is missing. There's a disc, like oh. a disc brake that goes in between these two. And like you got a brake. Break, huh? Yeah, you got brake shoes on both sides, disc pads that squeeze on there. That goes to your parking brake. So that was a, an actual disc. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, so they made they made different versions for different models. So is that a caliber mount right there? Yeah. On these was two the pins. Cal was right. the caliber right. that where the large? Mount, right. Two pads on each side. Yeah. Okay. And the disc in, the, in between these two flanges. So somebody just took it out, pulled the flanges together, took the shoes off. The this, this is part of the actuating mechanism right here. These rods are hanging down. The one on each side. Steve, this is where the lever in the cab connects to. So when you pull back on that lever, it pulls right. that in, pulls these two rods up, and that's what closes the pads on the disc. Before we get any farther back, let's look under the front. We'll also, uh, what's in the, oh, let's look at the front. Do you have brakes? Did you look yet? The air brakes? I believe front it brakes, does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, um, still has the air brakes. Yeah, if you could, Steve, that'd be great. 
Yeah, you've got front brakes. That's great. Those are so often removed. It's all there. There's your brake chamber, your slack adjuster, the back plate. It's all in there. The drum. Yep. A, a lot of times, the guys will just take those off. 80% of the time, 90% yeah, of the time. At least. Brings look pretty good. There's there's a fair amount of arch in them still. The um, shackles are not swung away forward. They're, they're pretty close, not far away from straight up and down. You got an archer in the spring, so that's good. And with severe service off road, these springs are frequently broken. I don't see any broken ones. Cardboard, so that's great. Look at this suspension. This is all original 970 series suspension. It's Timken. Uh, these axles are the standard worm drive axles SW456 that was the standard axles and standard suspension for this truck you could get this there wasn't any other suspension offered that was the suspension but you could also get double reduction which you don't have fortunately because you wouldn't want to be that slow yeah and that's for real hill climbing the ratios on these <clears throat> was either uh what was it 6.8 to 1, or 8.2 to 1, or 9 to 1. And I'm wondering what you got stuck with. Hopefully it's we can 6.8 uh, 6 to 1. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I'll take some wire brushing and see what's there. It's in fact factory. It's probably yeah. had 50 factories. Right, right. Yeah, so we found the ratio of the rear axles here, unfortunately. So it's stuck with the 9.1. That's right here. We just checked the other one, too. That's a nine there, and that's a one. Yep. Oh, so, well. That's the slowest one, but at least you got two overdrives. Good. So, my guess is you'd probably be good for about maybe 40, 38, 40 miles an hour, something like that. Which is. I saw a camera a minute ago, and Seth was away. So, this is all original. Whenever you see bolts, you know something's been moved, because everything was hot riveted together at the factory with those round, rivet, those round rivet heads, like you see up here. These are factory rivets. So the uh, the 974, the number four wheelbase was 218 inches. The 973 was 200 inches. The 974 was 218. That's from the front axle to this trunnion, the center line between the tandems. Yeah, you can see yeah, it was moved from right. up there. You can so see the discoloration. See where these came from. These four bolts came from here. And these four came from back here. This one's partly covered with weld, but they're the other three. So that's where it was originally. If you measure between the center of here and here, that center line to your front axle, you'll probably find that's 218 inches. And then just, they'd probably just trimmed off what, two or three feet yeah, off yeah, the end? Yeah, cut the frame off. There would have originally been quite a bit of frame behind that. Um, like if that's the back of the suspension, you would have had frame back to about here somewhere. Yeah, you got all your brake chambers down there, two on each axle, that's nice. Sometimes you never know, stuff happens. Guys, just I mean, it gets cannibalized for another truck, but it's all there. Uh, these springs are all original. These riveted rebound clips here, the factory, it's all original. It looks really nice. This is an old fifth wheel ASF. You can tell that we look at the casting on the side of the fifth wheel. It's an older fifth wheel. It's a nice fifth wheel if you want to keep it as a tractor. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it'll uh, probably stay on. Yeah, somebody. Just like somebody made their own sliding fifth wheel arrangement here to relocate it farther up right and pins yeah it's all the way back right now yeah, it'll probably leave that because it's all welded on the inside yeah to it? the to the main frame you can see on the other side too oh, right it's got places supported or welded to the top of the frame yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like it just had a few bolts and then welded the rest for welds right there it all adds up to be good so these two cross members are much too close together. Those weren't like this. This is, okay, this one's original. You can see where you got hot rivets. Yep, Three. and then that one's bolted. Right, right. This is still hot rivet. This is the original location for the first one. This one goes with the trunnion, the center of the tandem axles. So it's in the right place in relation to the axles, but that would have been back there where those other holes are. Yeah. In fact, you'll be able to see those six holes on each side also. Yeah, well, it's, some of it's missing because it's yeah, tapered. It the taper's been put in, so you yeah. can't see some of it because of that, but it would have been back here. Yeah. Probably just end up leaving it in the, in the position it's in now. What's nice, though, is that because they mounted this fifth wheel so high, 
they put it on this uh, sliding positionable rail here up above the frame, but they didn't have to cut the top of that hump down because sometimes you'll find the top of that hump cut off. And just put it in a flat it's plate. It's still there, it's still original. Very cool. The wheel's so high up in here. So that's a, that's a plus. Uh, flange on this nut right here. This is actually the inner nut. This is the outer nut. So this screws onto a stud that comes out of the hub and the brake drum. Oh, okay. Smaller, like the front size is. So this is the outer, this is the so inner this, nut. This is a separate piece from the, right. from the stud itself. Right, so these are screwed on to a much smaller stud okay. until that's, that shoulder seats and holds that wheel on. So all right. these, these okay. wheels are all clamped on by that shoulder. Okay. And then the outer wheel goes on, then the outer nut tightens that up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apple green. This is your apple green color right here too that would be on your original wheels. The mm -hmm. hub cover was painted the same trim color as the wheels, which in this case is apple green. Very cool. It's a nice green when it's not faded and got a mm -hmm. bunch of rust stain in it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Let's mention here, see if in fact it is an overdrive like the shift plate on the dash says. It should be a Spicer model 753 or 753A, and it's showing up really nicely. It's a 753. Can you get that? Yeah, I got the perfect yeah. shot on it. That's the that's the fastest overdrive you can get. 753A was a little bit slower. The direct wow. drive models, if you had direct, would be 752 or 752A. So you're doing good there. Awesome. Appears to be the original transmission. That's nice. This is funny. Somebody's put a lever on the bottom of the solenoid lever here for the starter so i don't know why you would want to do this this is something i could be under the truck and engage the starter <laughs> yeah, it's, started. it's definitely an emergency unless unless you know there's a nut there welded on maybe somebody had a cable in there going around where they could pull a, manually pull a cable to engage the starter i don't know that's funny <laughs> this oil pan is all original um you know detroit made so many options and so many different things for different applications and they got mixed and matched on trucks over the years but this particular pan with that sloping sump that's exactly what this truck is supposed to have awesome Perfect. and this is your original air reservoir that bracket these uh, uh rods that are bent around fit the bracket and these two holes that's all factory original this plumbing all this brass tube these nuts this is all original hopefully that tank's savable yeah it looks very good under here I really like that brownies in the, in the right place there. That's, that's really great. Your air brake valve is back here. The linkage goes up to the pedal in the front. Air brake valve is located right above the reservoir. That's original. This pipe has been cut and welded right here. I'm not sure why. Oh, I know why. Probably robbed it it's out. Because, no, it's because of the PTO. Oh, this exhaust pipe is somewhat original but they had to bump it out of the way like this to make room for the PTO lever here. It goes back there. Um, this piece of flex <coughs> is not original, which is not surprising. I mean, you know, uh, they rusted out after not very long. I yeah, have, I have uh, a truck with an original piece of flex on and that's, that's like a miracle. The whole but, front but as far as the section of it here, front. that's where it was. Yeah. So it looks like what they did here was they they cut this and turned it 180 degrees because it should be angling in this way and then have this bend that sets it straight. So they just cut it and turned it 180 degrees, welded it to make that clearance for that, that PTO lever. But as far as where the flex is, that's correct. And this pipe starting here, this is all original. That bracket on the back of the running board, completely oh, yeah. factory original. It's just starting to That's, out that's the weird too. Yeah, it looks like the pipe rusted out and the yeah, bottom they, here they passed and they up the back of it. Yeah. On it. Yeah, in fact, there's a hole just beyond where you're looking. Other side, yeah, there's, there's a big hole there. Still, same same problem, right? But that pipe is original, which is really uh, unusual. You don't ever see these things. <coughs> original factory vertical exhaust. Uh, very, very few trucks have these. This one, one of mine. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> out of about 55 of these trucks that I know to survive out of about 1,200. That these are the two trucks I know of that have, completely have the factory original exhaust, the heat shield screen, these acorn nuts, and the pan in the back, and these two brackets that join it to the cab. That's all GMC. Every bit of it.
this pipe coming down the, down the bottom here, like Steve says, been patched under here because it rusted through. But that's the original pipe on top and, and all around up here. This short little muffler that is sized to fit between the cab brackets so that the, um, the way the heat shield and the pipe is fastened to the cab is the same, same U-bolt that clamps the muffler to the pipe, to the tailpipe or the, the stack mm -hmm. and the bottom pipe. This muffler is made to fit right here. That's, it probably was a stock muffler and this is how they decided to position the brackets on the cab was over the muffler, but they go hand in hand. So that's the original muffler too. Wow. Or a replacement that's exactly like it. And it looks like it's in nice shape too. Behind here, because this is a diesel that didn't use the under seat gas tank. Although pre-war, the pre-war GMC diesel still use the under seat tank for diesel. Post-war models had the side tanks, side frame rail tanks, and this cover plate here with the bolt in the middle, that's factory GMC for covering up the filler neck hole for the under tank, the, the under seat tank. So that's all original. So the missing fuel tank on this side, it had two tanks. If it, if it has only one tank, this is the side that gets it. It has it on the other side, they had it here. These are the original fuel tank bracket holes. These two are the bolt holes for the bracket. Yeah, you can see the hole where the strap goes through. And you got that one, you got this one, and here's the front one right here. Then open up for something there, but that's what those are. That's where the tank was. And the original uh, primary fuel strainer, <clears throat> the first thing the fuel goes through is mounted to the front of this tank. Um, a lot of times if this tank goes away for whatever reason, somebody will weld the bracket to the cab to the, to the frame rail right here and hang it right there, but it's gone. So it went with the other tank. Uh, but these lines, this steel tube was is original, but it went to the fuel strainer that was mounted on the front of the tank right here. Gotcha. And that's, that's composed of a filter that's a series of brass discs all stacked up together with slight space between them, it filters the largest particles out of the fuel mm -hmm. and that goes to the pump and the pump sends it to the, the secondary fuel filter which is a replaceable element cartridge that does the final filtering up on the engine. That's the second filter. Very cool. So we'll need to find that as well as the whole tank. This is the semi-trailer air connections that have been put on this. It's not original. Um, this truck really, really wasn't designed for tractor service but um, you know guys do whatever they want with them. So this bracket, obviously, this has been added, and this valve and all this plumbing is for the semi-trailers that it's pulling. Yep. Pressure built up in that reservoir. You also have a 120 psi, 110 psi of air in that tank. And well, these trucks had that mechanical parking brake. That was the parking brake when you were parking the truck. You pulled that lever back. It clamped that disc drive shaft parking brake to the clean. So that was your parking brake. Um, but as far as trailers. Um, the air, the, the trailer has its own air reservoir also, right back by the wheels. And so the, the way the trailer brakes would set for parking brakes is there would be a valve that routes that air pressure. Once you disconnect your hoses and drop the trailer, pull out from under it, the air pressure in that tank <laughs> would be applied toward the brake shoes and hold that trailer solid brake. Yeah. But as that tank let off, would it be have a leak or not? It could be yeah. 10 minutes or it could be, you know, 10 months. Those brakes would eventually back off once that air pressure was lost, and then your trailer would roll free. Down the road. <laughs> so they've eliminated that now because they have spring brakes where there's right. a spring in that brake chamber that pushes those those uh, S cams tight with yeah. spring pressure. And you have to back up. in the day they probably had some trailers that yeah, roll away, yeah. <laughs> or you back up to a trailer, try to hook up to it, yeah. and you're chasing <laughs> it because yeah. it keeps going. Yeah, but it's all there, so you have yeah, it's you just have a track you slide it in. It all yeah. to go off of. So yeah, this battery compartment's in nice shape. I was just telling Seth, very little rust through, and usually these are just destroyed in here. Just the standard cab door that the GMC cut a piece out of to put this bulge in for the big 8D Type 12 volt battery. Originally a 12 volt system. Yeah, the diesels used 12 volt when the gas rigs with the same cab were still six volt. When did they go 24 volt systems? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it had to be, I think it was in the 60s actually. It was a lot later. Still cool. 12 volt batteries. Yeah, yeah. The trucks today have to be made with four volt all in there connected together. Showing, they had that flange rolled over there and just left it that way, painted it. No lead. Now this is the worst spot on the 
on oh, the yeah, tear. Yep. Right where you're that starting to tear. Very common there, that bracket. They had something on here. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Vibrate down. Because you still have your air cleaners on this side. I don't know what they would have had there. Maybe like a little toolbox or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe. That's just rust through there. Whatever it was, it was heavy because it rolled yeah, through Yeah, it rattled, rattled a tear in there. Our time, checking out ADCW 974 number 098. I'm really happy for Seth. He's a lucky guy, let me tell you. This is a nice truck. Uh, I have, this is probably the second best original 900 series long nose and ADC 900, ADCW 970 in existence. I've got the first best one. <laughs> and I think those are the only two I've ever found in about uh, over 35 years of looking for these trucks. I've cataloged about 55 of them around the country that are left and they're a lot worse than this one. <laughs> so I'm really happy. It's a, it's a really nice truck. We're going to do a little bit more tomorrow and get into the engine, look inside that, see what's going on with that because it's uh, it seems to have some engine problems. We're gonna take a quick look at though and see if we can figure out what's going on. Cool. Talk to you then. Thanks, Mark.